So what if I told you that the Hawks are actually playing some defense? Well, they added DeJounte Murray. Of course, they're playing some defense. It's more than that. Let me give you some numbers. And I know it's early and all this kind of stuff. I, I, I get all that, right? I, I understand that it's early, right? Right now, the Hawks, last year, the Hawks were 24th in the NBA in field goal percentage allowed. Hawks are currently 7th in the NBA in field goal percentage allowed. Last year, and this was a dreadful number, the Hawks were 28th in the NBA in three-point percentage allowed. They were a dreadful three-point percentage guarding team. They're second in the NBA right now. Last year, 25th in the NBA in points allowed. Obviously, they gave up a whole crap ton. This year, it's not awesome, but they're 16th in the NBA. And a couple of things to look at. When you look at defensive ratings, okay, in the NBA, Clint Capella is currently seventh in the NBA. So he's not only seventh in the NBA in defensive rating, he has the most rebounds of any player in the NBA, and he has the second highest rebounds per game number in the league right now. No real shock that DeJounte Murray comes in at 15th in NBA defensive rating. Any idea who's 18th in the league? How about John Collins? How about these two numbers for John Collins? John Collins is currently 15th in the NBA in defensive win shares. Basically, that's a, that's a metric where you look at points per 100 possessions and things like that, where you're able to credit a guy how much he stops a guy from scoring. He's 15th in the NBA in defensive win shares, and he's 18th overall in defensive rating. Now, look, I'm not telling you John Collins is going to be first team all NBA defense and this, any other. But obviously, this has been a very defensive challenge team over the last few years. And the fact that they're 24th up to 7th, 28th up to 2nd, those are huge steps. That's more than just DeJounte Murray out there. That's more than just how good Capella is at rebounding the basketball. They're getting, look, Okong was a good defensive player. He's got a really good defensive rating right now. But I'm impressed by the fact that John Collins ranks where he does. When you think about in the entire NBA, 15th in defensive win shares, 18th in defensive rating. That's a hell of a climb. And what have we talked about? Listen, rather than standing out and shooting threes and doing this, any other, score down low, rebound the basketball, play me some low post defense, right? He'll get plenty of opportunity. Because if you look, again, Trey Young and Murray are two of the best you know, facilitators in the league. They're two of the best, you know, assist per game guys in the NBA. So let's give the Hawks a little bit of credit here where they've had a definite jump forward in their defensive rating. Now, look, I will tell you, I think that is led by Murray, right? I do think that he's the leader of that in creating that mindset. But for a team that we have just wished and hoped and prayed – and I'm not worried about Trey Young. You don't have Trey Young on the court to be a top tier defensive back. Just be adequate. Just be enough of a guy to just hold your own water. Because they have enough other pieces with Capella Nakongu, with what John Collins is doing this year, with DeAndre Hunter, with what DeJounte Murray is. They have guys who can play some defense. And if they can get this part of their game on track, and we've talked about a couple things here. We talked about the schedule is opening up for the Atlanta Hawks. They're only going to play two teams above 500 over the next team, next 19 games to the end of the calendar year when we get to Wednesday of next week, right? They have a chance to pick up a whole bunch of games. Well, they're not just a fun team to watch offensively and the way they can get around and some of the things they're doing there, but defensively, they're playing better. Now, maybe part of that is just the teams that they're playing. They've played the Rockets in Orlando and Detroit and some teams like that. But they do have three games against the Bucs. They do have a couple of games against the 76ers. I know Joel Embiid has just gone off. I think Joel Embiid, I think I think the stat I saw is Embiid had more points in one game the other night than Ben Simmons has had for the entire year. That's how scary that, that process is. But anyway, the Hawks playing some good defense right now. 
is going to be so critical. And again, how are we getting back? We talk all the time about which direction is that pendulum swinging? How are we going to find ourselves back into the top part of the Eastern Conference? How are we going to find ourselves making a deep run in the playoffs? You got to play good defense. You know, you look at the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, they've got Middleton, who's an Olympian. They've got the best player in the NBA in Giannis. They have Drew Holiday. But what are they really good at? Well, they're an awesome defensive team. Holiday's as good a defensive guard as theirs. He's a first-team All-NBA defensive player. Giannis, he's only what? Two-time defensive player of the year. He's only the best two-way player in all of the NBA. Probably the best player overall, but certainly the best two-way player in the NBA. And Middleton's a really good player, obviously, as well. They build their brother, you know, because they've got Coach Budenholzer, and they're going to build around their defense. The Hawks can stay at this kind of level, where they can be a top 10 defense right now in the NBA. Whew. I mean, think about how much easier your life becomes. And think about what we've been begging for, right? We, we know Hunter was drafted to be a defensive stopper. He was the best defensive on-ball defender in college basketball, right? The best defensive player coming out, best defensive player in the country when he was when he was in college. We know Capella, he's a dominant rebounder, but he can do enough inside. That's why I didn't really want to go out and spend twice as much money for the Rudy Gobert's and stuff like that. Capella can handle his own. You know, I don't need to spend $40 million on a center when Capella can offensively and defensively not be that big of a step back. Capella may not be elite defensively, but look, again, he's a dominant rebounder. Not good. He's a dominant rebounder. He has more rebounds than anybody in the NBA right now. And he can hold his own defensively. He's seventh in the NBA in defensive rating right now. So you don't need to spend $42 million on a center. I get how good Gobert is, and he's a defensive player of the year. But when I'm looking about what I need to upgrade on, Capella was fine. The one guy, like I said, that's really surprising is what John Collins has done this year for this team. It's been amazing that he's actually upped his game. Maybe that's because of Murray. Maybe that's because everybody around him has upped their game. Maybe because they're just getting after. I don't know what it is. But the idea of going from 24th to 7th in field goal percentage, from 28th to 2nd in three-point percentage, and better as far as overall scoring, 25th to 16th, Let's give the Hawks a little bit of credit. We've been waiting for this to happen. We've been waiting to see this. Now we're getting some, you know, some fruition out of their defensive effort. All right, don't forget, we uh, want you to make Locked On Sports uh, Atlanta your first listen every day and hitting hard. But don't forget, Locked On Sports today should be your second listen. Check out the biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, the take of the day. Locked On Sports today, it's available on YouTube. It's available on Odyssey, all your favorite podcast platforms. Check those guys out there today.